Okay, so as you can see, you just got to load back into the tutorial mission. Um, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to set up some very simple DAC zones. Now, for testing purposes, uh, it's best to just delete everything except for the player, um, all the units that is, uh, leave all the modules and the zones. Uh, move the zones further south as well. Uh, so just save that. Um, now, the first thing we want to do before we even bother. Uh, making any changes is the alt tab and we go to your yep your mission folder um, and so we want to open up the description.ext edit with notepad plus plus okay so as you can see we have a whole bunch of information here um, so we have the headless client uh, we want to make sure that the headless client is temporarily turned off um, and the way we do that is we go to line 50 and see where it says default equals 1 set to 0 for local testing with Merck alright now this is actually incorrect at this point uh, this might be fixed in later revisions of the framework but uh, that's just um, yes yeah, this just pertains to the headless client for DAC as well. So, Merck was an old spawn script. We don't need we don't need that anymore. Um, now we want to just switch uh, default equals one to default equals zero. Simple as that. That just turns headless client off and runs it off your computer. Um, so, if that's not done, that will not work. Um, then the other thing we need to do is we need to go down to the DAC test markers down to line 68. Now, as you can see. Set the forward view DAC zone and unit markers on your map during the mission, primarily for testing. So that's exactly what that says. Basically, it's a debug thing that'll just pop up as you're editing, um, and will uh, essentially show you every, every, everything that's going on and all the functions uh, during the mission. So very useful. So you switch that to four, no, sorry, four, um, and save it. So the two things in summary. Um, got to switch the headless client off and test markers on. Now these things need to be turned back to their original states once you finish the mission. Um, so just be aware of that, otherwise your mission won't work. Um, anyway, okay so we have two triggers here, north and south. Um, now what we want to do is we open, we want to open up the north trigger um, where it says activation trigger underscore example zone we want to switch that to activation trigger underscore alpha just for simplicity uh, you can call the zones whatever you want uh, it doesn't really matter but just the way it's set out at the moment isn't great so just switch that to something simple um, and we want to change this to an ellipse and I think we want to make it slightly larger as well so switch that to 200 on axis A and B um, and yeah, so we want to leave activation as blue for once present this blah blah blah. So it should look something like this. Now, we want to possibly drag that down a little bit, um, drag the player out of the zone somewhere. Um, then we get the square trigger here. Then we open this up. God damn it. Um, then we get the. Ex Sorry, I'm throwing off a bit here. Uh, so it's called example zone. We just want to change this to quite simply alpha. Uh, activation will be game logic, repeatedly, present, true. Simple. Just leave it like that. Uh, you want to okay that. And so basically, save it. What will happen is that our players will walk into this ellipse trigger, and then that ellipse trigger will then activate this zone. <laughs> Okay, so now that we've done that, we need to define what's actually going to spawn within this zone. So we alt tab, uh, go to your scripts folder. So yeah, um, mission folder, scripts, DAC, spawn DAC zones .sqf. Open that with Notepad plus plus. Here we have a whole bunch of commented fields. All right, so this has a general explanation and an example of what your you should look like so we just want to copy this without the slashes at the start um, paste that down there 
Okay, so nil equals zone, example zone, blah, 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 blah. Um, now, the hardest part of DAC is pretty much learning what these numbers mean. Once you've learned what these numbers mean, it's very simple. Um, so I'll start off by making everything consistent and renaming this to alpha. Simple. Uh, we'll save that. Um, Alright, so this is where the DAC guides come in handy. Um, it should be worth noting that the guides themselves aren't 100% accurate uh, because they're actually built for the module version rather than the script version that we're using. But to essentially figure out what these arrays are, they're quite useful because they use the same arrays. Um, so we'll open up the short reference, which is probably what you'll use the most. Um, and you can see that they have pretty much the same thing. So they have the, uh, under A here, we have Z, uh, zone 1. That's what that is supposed to mean, but we've just replaced that with alpha. Um, and then we have the first array here, which is uh, this array. And then we have the blue array, which is this one, and then the yellow array, which is this one etc. Um, okay, so basically the way it works is, you, you can pretty much figure this out by reading all this, but I'll go into detail. Um, so the first array here is essentially identification, um, and it sort of ties in with the name of it as well. Um, so this very first number is actually quite important. Um, that's just like the zone ID number. So if you were to have let's say a Bravo zone uh, let's I'll sort of show you kind of an example uh, so we have a Bravo zone here now it's also under ID 1 and what they're gonna do is they're gonna essentially spawn the same things but they're gonna share waypoints so AI units from this zone are also possibly gonna walk into this zone as well because they're linked. However, if I was to change this to two, they wouldn't share uh, share waypoints. They they'd stay within their own zones. So I'll just delete that for now. Um, the second number uh, that refers to whether the zone is active from the start of the mission or whether it is triggered by a trigger um, in the mission. So I normally just leave this on one. However, there are certain reasons that you might want it to start at the very start, so you just turn that to zero. But we'll leave that as one for now. Um, the third number is something that I've never used before, so I don't really care. Um, now the second array here, that refers to infantry. So basically all infantry that are spawning in the zone. Um, now this doesn't seem 100% accurate, I might be wrong. Um, I would recommend changing this final 10 number to 60. Uh, as well as here as well. So, um, I'll explain why in a second. So, uh, these numbers essentially reference um, another script within uh, DAC, which is in another folder at the moment, but it's still a new mission folder. So, um, what's it, what it's doing is it's spawning um, four groups of infantry um, at size one, and then it's giving each of those groups 10 waypoints. Now, um, there's actually 60 waypoints inside the group, so it essentially gives 10 of those 60 waypoints to each of those four groups. So you want to make sure there's plenty of waypoints available for them to choose from. Um, so this array refers purely to infantry, um, and so the way the second number is calculated as well is that uh, so it's done in sizes, so hold on a sec. Okay, so I found this reference here. Um, this isn't too hard to find. Uh, so this isn't generating one unit in each of the four groups. It's actually generating two to four units in each group. So the one is just a reference, as we can see here. Um, hold on, I'll expand this. So yeah, the one equals two to four units. However, if we were to change that to two, it would be two to six units. Or if we were to go up to three, that'd be two to nine units. Or if we wanted to be really ballsy, we uh, switch it up to four and we got two to 12 units. Um, so there's actually quite a lot of AI being spawned there. Uh, so yeah, switch that back to one. Um, 
So this third array here, that refers to wheeled vehicles, so that's things like uh, trucks and um, technicals and stuff like that. Um, so it works pretty much the same. Uh, yeah, so it's exactly the same. And then tracked vehicles, very similar. Um, you would just put pretty much the same kind of deal with this bracket. Um, and then this last array is for helicopters or camps, but I'll go into those later. Um, so yeah, the infantry array, the infantry array is pretty much the, the one you're going to use the most. Okay, so then we have the final array here. Um, this sort of identifies, sorry, this is more about um, behaviors and what kind of units are spawning. So I believe the first one is J. Oh, I remember now, there's um, actually a typo within this guide. Just be aware of that. Uh, it says J here and then it says I here. So just be aware that that's a bit of a mistake. Um, but basically, so the first number, this first number, um, that references whether they are east, west, or independent or civilian. So if we currently they're set up to west, so blue four. However, if we wanted, if we wanted them to be op four, switch them to zero. If we wanted them to be um, independent, we switch them to two. If we want them to be it's civilians, three. Leave it as blue four for now. Um, then we have unit configuration of the zone. So uh, basically that's what faction they are. So I believe currently they're set to NATO, which is four. Um, and then there's other ones like and you just switch the number around for whatever is referenced in the config, which I'll find I'll find now, actually. So yeah, all these numbers often, these numbers pretty much reference things in here. So uh, we open up DAC config units, open with Notepad++, plus plus, we can see what's referencing. So. It's currently set to four, so that's RHS USF USMC Desert. The number six here, uh, that's behavior. So that references hold on, uh, the DAC config behavior.sqf. So if we open that with Notepad, what it's referencing is K6. Uh, so basically, AI will be quite calm, so safe, 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 aware. Um, now what it's doing there is it's saying that the more times safe is listed, uh, the less it's going to select from aware. So it's like a, it's basically a randomized variable. Okay, so then we have this sum number zero, which is the fourth number in that array. Uh, that's camp configuration of the zone. So that, again, refers to the config under camps, finds the case in that. Um, if you look through the thing, you can figure it out, but I'll go back into that because camps is a little more complex. Waypoint configuration of the zone. Uh, I've actually never used that before, so I just leave it. Um, let's open it up, have a look at it. Yep, there's some, there's definitely some numbers here. Yep, anyway. So, we have this set up. Um, this will need to have been co copied and pasted in like this. Um, now we've got to just test it in the mission, see how it goes. So let's boot up, get back into Armour 3. Uh, let's get you nice and close, and then we'll preview it. Okay, so as you can see, previewed in, everything started popping up, and at the top right we have DAC initialized, and it's now generating waypoints. What it's done is it's generated waypoints within this zone, uh, and this actually pops up on the map. Um, and now it's actually deactivated the zone. So it's generated waypoints, it's generated units, and then deactivated it. Uh, it's created 20 waypoints within that zone. So let's see what happens. So as you can see, Got these dudes, let's compress time. They're just chilling out, patrolling around. Okay, so let's say we want to do some kind of like reinforcement 
type deal with enemies coming from one point and then coming to another. So how do we do that? How do we get AI to completely leave one zone and move to another one? Uh, it's pretty simple. Um, so basically what I've done is I've duplicated this zone and I made another one. I just call it Bravo, very simply. Um, and then I went Alt-Tab, open up the spawn-dax-zones.sqf. Okay, so what I've done with this is uh, I've opened up the spawn dax sqf and I've made Bravo, basically duplicated it. Um, and so it's part of the same zone ID, so they're linked. Uh, so they're both zone one, essentially. Um, and I've activated Bravo from the start. So as soon as the mission starts, that zone will be active. However, it doesn't have any AI in it. It only has waypoints. So that's what these 60s are. So it has 60 infantry waypoints and 60 wheeled, wheeled vehicle waypoints. Um, now with the alpha zone, I've added another number onto the first array, which is 100. Um, so basically what that means is that uh, AI will essentially 100% leave the zone. Um, they won't come back to it if they can't help it. So um, I have heard that it's actually supposed to be zero, but I've tried zero in the past and it hasn't worked for me, but 100 works fine. Possibly I'm doing it wrong, but it works. So whatever. Um, let's hop back into the game um, and give this a test. So as you can see, DAC initializing. Now we've got this multicolored zone here. This is Bravo, so it's just spawning uh, waypoints. They're linked. Uh, they'll be deactivated soon. Um, actually, that is to say, Alpha will deactivate. Bravo will not deactivate. Bravo is always activated. It just has nothing in it. So if I walk forward and activate the trigger, I'll compress time as well. Yep, here we go. So they are now leaving their zone and they will not come back to that if they can't help it. Okay guys, so I'm just going to explain um, DAC camps, how they work uh, and how you implement them. So what I've done is I've taken the first zone, I've removed the 100 um, number from there. Uh, so it'll AI will stay in that zone. Um, so this this spawns essentially as normally, uh, so back, revert it back to what it was. Um, then I've set up Alpha Counter here instead of Bravo. Uh, so this is relatively normal, except for the fact that the um, fifth array has a much larger field in it. So uh, it's kind of annoyingly hard to find the um, documentation for this, but um, it is here. Uh, so there's an example here. So array to generate DAC camps, one, two, fifty, zero, one hundred, ten. So I basically copied that with some minor changes. <coughs> um, basically, it's one camp of size. Uh, sorry, one camp size of one camp group. Um, at a radius of fifty meters. Uh, Zero is vehicles and infantry. Uh, One hundred percent. I'm not actually sure what that pertains to. Uh, to do some reading on that, um, and I've set it to seven respawns. So the final number is how many respawns are available. Um, so uh, then I also set this DAC uh, camp config to one, and this references the actual config itself which is go back to DAC and then configs and if you open up that config camps edit with notepad plus plus uh, you, can <coughs> you can see what re what it's referencing here and basically it's trying actually sorry I'm on the wrong mission um, yeah so here's what it's trying to reference it's trying to reference case one here um, and it's basically got some bunkers uh, with a flag on it um, and some ammo boxes as well and then these numbers here are the positions for that um, 
So if you change those numbers around, it'll change the position when it spawns. Um, and then we have some static weapon emplacements here. They're all mortars at the moment. Um, I normally change this because <laughs> if uh, AI mortars see enemies, they'll basically just pummel them until they're dead. So it's a little overpowered. So I often change them to static weapons or something like that, or I just remove them. Um, so that's what it references. Uh, if I open up armor 3, I'll show you what I've done. Basically left that as normal, except I've renamed this trigger to alpha counter. And I've moved myself and the trigger way out. Um, and there's a reason for this, which I will go into in a bit, but I'll show you how this works. So basically, uh, a camp is going to be generated in this zone and not much else. Um, and then up here, this is the alpha zone, so that's where all the infantry are going to spawn as they did before. Uh, so I'll just preview that. Okay, so we're just going to trigger these zones. They'll turn on in a second. There we go. Now it's throwing in AI. Here we are. So here we have the camp around here and some defenders. Um, and got some infantry just and some vehicles milling around there. Uh, so if I go into Zeus mode and start playing around, I'll show you how this will work and why it's so cool. So, here's our camp, it's got the mortar guys here, they're ridiculously overpowered, it's got some ammo crates, it's got a flag, and some, there's a campfire here, and some dudes who just guard it, the USMC guys. Um, then we have our infantry. Now, with the respawns, if we were to do something terrible right now, something absolutely horrible, like slaughter innocent marines. I think it killed some wildlife as well. Uh, we'll see it says Alpha 1 2 was respawned. And now it's respawning infantry. And basically, what they're going to do. Yep, there we go. Basically, what they're going to do is go back to the original waypoints and resume what they were doing. So these guys are slowly walking off. Uh, we still have the defenders sitting around. So basically what's going to happen is, see, now it's uh, reduced the amount of respawns left. So these guys are now walking into this zone here. So what this does is it essentially caps the amount of AI that we have in a zone. So if you want, like one of my biggest issues is um, <clears throat> when you have a lot of downtime between objectives. You know, you've gone to a zone, you've wiped out all the enemies, um, and there's not much else to do, you're sort of sitting around. Um, this will sort of keep a constant stream of AI, um, but it also makes sort of the mission make a little bit more sense. It, it, it means that, you know, instead of just respawns, um, instead of just reinforcements just, you know, spawning or materializing off in the hills and coming in to your objective, um, they're actually spawning off of a, of a base, essentially. Um, and that's a base that can be destroyed. Okay, so the reason I put myself way out here is because if I get too close to this uh, zone, and that can, this, this variable can, can be changed, um, it will cut off the respawns. So, um, it essentially has an impact on gameplay itself. Um, and once all these defenders uh, killed, um, that camp will be wiped out. So if I was to start killing these, actually it doesn't even matter because the camp has already turned itself off. But I've essentially just destroyed the camp, nothing else can respawn there. However, um, once the camp has also run out of reinforcements, um, it, the, the defenders will actually leave their spots and join the uh, other zone. So. It's a really, really good system to use this. Um, I did have problems in a mission when uh, AI was sort of spawning just kind of like in plain view. Uh, that kind of kills people's immersion and it's a bit unfair if AI sort of just pop up and start shooting people out of, you know, out of nowhere. So you might want to have do some work just trying to hide these in places, but you can just sort of have them spawn randomly in a sort of large zone. 
which is um, not a bad way of doing it. Um, but yeah, they're they're a good system. Really recommend it. Very simple to use. Um, very good on server performance because we're not throwing in extra AI. We're only using what's essentially been killed. Um, yeah, recommend it.